appreciate being here. Um, not in my wildest dreams that I imagined 25 years ago when I was going to the state that I would be in the position I am now to come and speak with students. And so this is a this is a wonderful uh, honor to be here and, and be with you. When I was putting this together, uh, so I, I give this presentation. I'm going to walk around and I'm going to call on you. No, you thought this was easy, but I, I I do have some stuff that I hand out also. So it's not it's not just the one presentation. But um, when I was I give this talk to um, other universities, and I also give this talk to professional associations, ASCE and others. And I modified it. And I added the life tip because there's a lot of tips that I wish I had when I was going to school school here. And um, you'll hear it woven into my stories. So my presentation is something that I want you to put in your back pocket. So you're not going to start your own firm tomorrow or even the next day or even in five years. There is a tremendous amount of written information in this presentation, which is exactly what you do not want to do in presentation. So I do always hear about make it short and sweet. But this is something I want you to put away. And in, in 10, 15, 20 years, when you're ready to start your own company, I want you to bring this out and it'll have all the necessary things you need to start your own firm if you're interested. And if not, then the life lesson will be available. Um, so my story started here in 1995. Uh, even before that, I'm a son of an immigrant family that, that came to the United States in the mid 80s. I was four in fourth grade, didn't speak any English. And uh, my sister and I at the time came here from Iran. My parents gave everything up. Uh, my dad was one of the larger developers in Iran and was in the middle of building the highest skyscraper in Tehran and left it half finished. And basically came here and started looking for literally started looking for my my mom was an economics professor at the University of Tehran and came here and started coming here. And so it's a very typical immigrant story, right? And I probably share that with a lot of you, a lot of you at this university. Um, I worked through school as my sister did and learned and build those relationships and build bonds that I'll be talking about. And, 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 and we're here today talking about bonds. With, with, with. Uh, so let's let's start uh, let's start with some questions and I'm gonna start asking you some questions. And typically when I give this talk, and it's not a reflection of civil engineering in general, but I usually hand out the kilo. But being that we're in a student environment, I'm gonna hand out some gift cards to Amazon for right answers. All right. There's actually no right or wrong answers, but We'll, we'll start handing that out. Why, why would you, why would anybody be interested in starting their own business? Let's talk about that. Don't step out. You don't have to raise your hand. Come on. Let's go. Two ways. Go ahead. Someone taught you? Autonomy. I like that. Okay. Come on. Let's see. Here's something else. I'll throw some out there. More freedom and time off. Go ahead. Go ahead. Speak up. Speak up. Two way communication. Exactly. I can do this. I can do this better. Better work if I want more money. Some people want to want more money, right? They can go ahead, go ahead. Your own boss, exactly. I had I think I had that somewhere. Tired of working for the man or woman, right? I think you, you mentioned that. I saw other hands. Go ahead. Speak up. Exactly. Absolutely. You're you're really passionate about something you love. And you'll hear that in here too. Love. Um and I can do this better myself. And to me, this is very touching as coming from an immigrant family. It's American dream, right? You come to this country, you hear about people starting their own business. And honestly, this is one of the few countries that you can do that, right? You can come here with absolutely nothing, start flipping burgers and build yourself into whatever you want, especially at this university. Now they say. And, and this is a little ways from, from you guys, but looking to retire, that's down the road for you, closer to me than you, hopefully. But one of the 
of the reasons I start with this slide is that a lot of times you go down this journey and you don't do this journey by yourself, right? You start a business, you start a company, you start a firm with someone else, a partner. And the number two reason why businesses fail in the United States, number two reason is bad partnership, right? It's because the partners don't get along. Not only do they not get along, they don't have the same reason why they started the company. But let me tell you about one of my best friends, this gentleman right here, Eugene Bios. We graduated from San Jose State together. He still has his hair. I don't have my hair. Blame that on my wife. But uh, we graduated um, in 1998 with our master's in civil engineering. He and I were fortunate enough to start our firm right around the same time in 2004. And he is highly successful. He is one of my best friends. He started a firm. The, 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 the firm now has 200 employees, 15 offices. They are the go-to firm. If you're interested in, I gotta get this right because he, he got he got on me and this is being recorded. So I gotta, I gotta make sure I get this right. Um, envelope design, X. They're very good at X or Y. They're one of the premier firms in their field. And he is passionate about it, right? And there he is now. He works every minute and every day. No matter when I call him, he's at the office working. And he loves what he does. And he's very good at what he does. And he owns the best, biggest cars, the biggest house, on the in Los Altos Hills, or uh, and and, and is that's that's what's important to him. What's important to him is big, making his company grow, having money, having his uh, um, name and lights, right? That's what he's passionate about, and he loves the fact that he has this big house, and he loves the fact that he is in a country club and plays golf a lot with really powerful people including Elon Musk, I think, at one point. And he called me the other day because I give him a hard time. I give him a hard time. I said, when do you spend time with your kids, man? Like, when, when, are, you, when are you with your kids? When, when, do you, when do you have time for family? And he called me the other day. I said, he said, you know what? I have a picture for your damn presentation. And you always talk to you talk about me in your presentation. I have a picture for you. Put this in your presentation. So he takes his kids now to the office. And he has a chest full of toys so his kids can be there while he's working, right? And he gets to spend time with his kids. Why I started the my firm is totally opposite, right? This is what I do. I, I started my firm with my partners for exactly the opposite reason of YouTube, right? I started it to make enough money to go do this. Ski 30 days a year, travel the world. This is what I'm passionate about. Civil engineering gets me there. I don't have 15 offices. I don't have 200 people or 15 people. And we've been 15 people for the last three years. Now going back to this, it doesn't mean that I'm right and Eugene is wrong. And it doesn't mean that Eugene is right and I was wrong. That's not the point of this. The point is that if Eugene and I work together, we would drive each other crazy. Because I'd be skiing all the time while he was working all the time. Right? The point is that the number two reason why businesses fail in the United States is because partners have this wonderful relationship and hang out on our great friends, but they don't have the second conversation on the fact that why do you want to start your own why do you want to do this right and that's why businesses fail number two reason why businesses fail is because that conversation is not had at the beginning so if you are going to if you are going to partner up with somebody make sure you have that conversation make sure you have that talk and say hey man i just want to do this to go ski 
All right, I love civil engineering. It's awesome. I make pretty good money, but that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing it to, to go be able to go pick up my kid after school. But if your partner says, hey, I want to grow this thing to an empire, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You guys are not going to get along. You may get along for the first couple of years, but you're not going to get along. So I always start with a slide, no matter where I'm at, at universities, at professional organizations, at conferences, it's relationships. And those relationships don't matter if you're sitting here as a student or if you're sitting at a conference 10 years down the road. Those relationships are exactly the same. So understand what that is. All right, so moving on. Sorry, there was no, I, I just got you motivated with the gift cards to start talking, but the actual question comes later. So I'm sorry. You'll, you'll get it. Don't worry. You'll get it. But all right, so we sat down with my partners. There was four of us that started the company. And the only reason my name is on the company was we're all in our 20s and everybody thought this thing was not going to last. So I was the only one that said, okay, I guess put my name on it. But there's no other reason for that, right? Yeah. But so it, it, and it stuck. And here we are 20 years later. All right. So we, we wrote down what was important to us, right? Our core values. And we actually solidified this a few years ago by sitting down and going through a process and really coming down. What, what is a core value for me? As a person, and, and you need to know what your core value is right now, sitting here as a student and later on in your careers, because this will affect you as you go through your career and it will affect you as you decide what jobs to take. Right? What, what is important to you? What is your passion? Like you said, what is, what is your passion for what you love to do? Structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, skiing. You know, that's, that's right. All right. So when we made our list, number one was fun, right? It wasn't the Eugene model. It was different. We wanted to, we had to work at 11 different companies before we started our own firm, collectively, the four of us, right? And we found that our industry, civil engineering, but it's very hierarchical, right? It, it's, it's a very old industry. The Romans build aqueducts that are still working today, right? Our industry is pretty damn old. Concrete is concrete, steel is steel, and yes, there's a lot of new technology and, and there's a lot of changes, but we're pretty damn old. And it's very hierarchical. And we found that respect to each other, to our co-workers, meant a lot to us. In 20 years since we started the company, We've had one person leave the company. One person, one, one turnover in 20 years. We've had two retirees and one turnover. So I like to venture to say that we're doing something right. Right? That's a pretty good turnover rate. Balance. You hear me talk about that a lot. You can't just go out and ski or golf like some of my partners like or travel. You still have to work, man. You still have to earn the respect of your clients. You still have to be the best of what you are, or else you can't do the other stuff that you want to do. Balance is really important in your life, in your studies. And I always, my, my friends and, and colleagues always say, man, you're always out having fun. But you can't have that without balance. You can't be there without balancing your life and studying and, and making sure that you set yourself up to be able to do that. Trust, integrity, family, and quality. Those are, the, those are the things that round out our core values in our company. Not only our company, but my partners, my coworkers. And we all believe this. And you know how I know it? We all believe it because no one leaves the same company, right? It's like a cult. <laughs> In a good way, a good way, not bad. But it's it's really it's really getting back to the fact that wherever you end up with, and and this applies to life. This applies to your partner in life, your wife, your husband, your partner. You got to be on the same page. It's not gonna last. 
So all these things are very important in, in different ways to different people in my part in, in our partnership in our in our work. Okay, to partner or not to partner. I'm going to go through the next few slides really fast. And I know I know it's going to be really quick, and I'm sorry about that. But again, I want to get a lot of data back to you guys in the future when you want to pull this presentation back. So to partner or not to partner, a partner will help spread the load, right? So you don't have to do everything yourself. So your decision is should I partner and start this company by myself or with another person? If you have another person, you can rely on them. They will help you out, right? They will, they will, they will, they will spread the load. Partner will help fund the business so you don't have to pay for it all yourself. There are startup costs. We'll talk about that. Partner will, will spread the risk. So if it goes belly up, you're not the only one holding the back, right? But conversely, a partner, a partner will uh, spread the profits, right? Because you can't, you know, you got to share. And they can be a pain in the ass. <laughs> so choose wisely. Choose wisely. Really, really important. Make sure you complement each other. So, what does that mean? What does that mean to complement each other? If you're going to partner up with somebody, what do they bring to the table? Right. So, you're a structural engineer, and your best friend's a structural engineer. And you're sitting there saying, "Man, we could start a business together. Let's start a start a firm." You guys are exactly the same thing. You're doing exactly the same thing. What the what is it? What why is why should you partner? There might be a financial reason, right? And I'm here to argue, or I'm here to present, or I'm here to say that maybe you should find somebody that compliments you. And it and it is not exactly the same as you. Right? So let's talk about these three guys from the 70s. Who here is a civil engineer? Oh, come on, raise your hands, guys. Be proud of the civil. Come on. All right. Here. So I give this presentation to a lot of civil engineers, and, and they, they know who this guys are. So I'm going to go through it pretty, pretty fast. But this guy in the middle is Carl Harris. He started a very successful engineering firm called Harris and Associates. About 350 people uh, now, about 400 people now, based in Concord, offices throughout the United States. That's, the, that's I think, their first Christmas party. That's Carl, that's Jim, and that's Bob. And they all, when they started the firm, they all brought different things to the table, right? So Bob was a traffic guy, Jim was construction manager, and then Carl was municipal. So he worked with counties and cities and so forth. And the reason they, it worked for them, and it's the reason it's worked a lot in firms, is that they complemented each other. Not all of them were exactly the same, right? That's us. When we cashed our first check, and we knew after five months that we were not going to go out of business. We went to Vegas, like most people do, and we played golf. Right? And these are my three wonderful, wonderful friends. The guy in the middle is a retired guy. Brandon, Vic, and Gary. If you look up Gary in the dictionary, he is your engineer. He loves calculations. He loves analytics. He loves working on design and solving problems. He is uncomfortable in front of this, doing this. He's uncomfortable talking, right, in front of people. He's uncomfortable going out and getting work, right? This guy right here, Victor Fong, one of my best friends, wonderful in construction, great out in the field, great talking with contractors and change orders and, and, and those kind of things. And, and Brandon was kind of a jack of all trades, could kind of plug in there and work. How do I fit in? Six months into our business, my partners came to me and said, hey, um, we love you, but we're going to take AutoCAD off your computer because you're fuck screwing up <laughs> computer. You're screwing up our designs too much, right? They said, you're really good at doing this, going out and talking to people, going out and getting work. But let us do the actual work, right? We complemented each other. It doesn't mean that I'm better than Gary or Gary's better than me. It means that we work together well. I could not be here if it wasn't for the three of them and my other wonderful coworkers that I have now. I would not be here. I actually texted them as I drove in. We used to play football in the courtyard when I was here. 
I don't know if people still do that or not, but we broke some windows and that, that was it. But I, I got to, I pulled in and there was a sign that, that said, uh, you know, please put my name on it, park here. And it also had the Dean's, it said Dean's space, the Dean's parking area, right in the back of the courtyard. That sign has been there, not mine, but the Dean's parking has been there for 25 years. Same spot. We used to play football and that was the end zone, right? And we were always careful to break another person's window and not the Dean's window. And never in my 25 years did I, did I imagine I'd be parking there. Have the opportunity to be here and talk to you. But the reason I wanted to bring that up was I texted my friends, my coworkers. And I said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't because of you. I wouldn't be here being able to talk if it wasn't because if it wasn't for them. And that, I truly mean that. Find partners that compliment you and find partners that you know you could go through this journey together. And that's not just work, that's in life. Your wife, your husband, your partner. I hope you were able to do that. Okay, what are you up against? There are 12,000 AE firms in the United States, 12,000 architectural engineering firms in the United States, 1,500 in California. So more than 10% are in California. Okay, for the first, can anybody want to guess how many of those are small firms? How many of those are little firms? Percentage wise. 70. What? You guys don't want 50 bucks? Seriously? No one online wants it. So we got 70. That's it, huh? Okay, we'll give it to you. 66%. Thank you, sir. That's a civil engineer. I like that. <laughs> Speaking up. All these firms are small, right? You think about these giant firms in civil engineering, you think about Bechtel, right? Most of you have heard of Bechtel. Most of you have heard of other big firms in the valley here. But more than two thirds are little firms that you've never heard of. And they outpace every other firm out there as far as growth goes. You guys ever heard of these guys? This guy right here, Warren? Warren B? Warren Bechtel? Bechtel. He started Bechtel, and again, I'm sorry, yes, I know, I know who you're talking about. He's a cool guy too, but he's not a civil engineer, so we won't go there. But he is pretty cool too. Um, Warren Buffett was, was uh, what, what he referred to. Um, this is Mark Thomas, another guy here in the Valley that started a very, very reputable, now 350 person firm out of his garage. Warren out of his garage, Paul Harris out of his, I think his parents' backyard. And you hear that story over and over, right? So if they can do it, why not you? Why not you? Somewhere down the road. Okay, so going through this really quick, um, go all in. If you're gonna do this, go all in. So don't half ass it. All right, more questions. But percentage of the marriages that fail. Who's married here? Who's married? We got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Six people. All right. Percentages of mar marriages that end in divorce. 50%. Exactly. You don't get a prize for that. Thing. So that's not a that's not a fly number. 50% of marriages end in divorce. That's a staggering number if you think about it, right? So let's talk about this. This is where the prize comes in. Percentage of businesses that fail in their first year. 75? 80%. 80%. Good job. 80% of businesses fail in the United States. So I hear this all the time. I, I did this talk again at conferences, at, 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 at other universities, at uh, luncheons. They're like, why are you doing this? You're, you're creating more, more um, competition for yourself. I always like to point this out. Well, statistically speaking, one in five of you will, will succeed. So that is a staggering number, right? But here's the reason I put this up here. For those of you that are married, those of you in love, hopefully that's all of you, at some point in your life, you don't go into that marriage saying, I love you, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. 
but statistically, <laughs> this is going to not work out half the time. That's not what you're thinking. You're all in, right? You're all in to that to that to that relationship. You're all in to that marriage. Well, I'm making the argument. Don't have to Go all in when you're going to start. If you're going to start a business, go all in. So let's talk about what that means. Get an office, get insurance, get licenses, hire professionals, and, and for your branding, do it all. Because you, you hear this a lot when you're starting a consulting firm. In that, okay, you know what? I'll dabble. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll put my foot in. I'll, I'll still keep this and I'll still do that. Now we're here to argue that it really doesn't cost that much to start a consulting firm. Right? And go on. You're going to do it, do it right. It's not a big investment compared to other things. You're not starting a restaurant, which is hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're not starting a retail store where you need inventory. Right? A consulting firm, they're paying for this. They're paying for your brain. They're paying for you to solve something for them. <clears throat> and it doesn't cost that much money to set it up. And we'll get into that in a minute. But I want you to think about going all in. All right, let's keep going. That's my partner, Gary. You guys recognize him in golf? Here's our first day, our very first day in the office. We had rented an office from a company that had gone out of business, right? And so we bought the furniture also. I picked up a six pack of beer. Alcohol is a theme in this presentation. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> picked up a six pack of beer and we sat down. And my partners and I toasted the last job we we're ever going to have. That's what we were thinking. We had no idea what we we're doing. We're, we're in our 20s. I was 28. I didn't know if we we're going to last six months. But man, our mentality was this is it. We're, I'm not going to do anything else with anybody else. And that's what we toasted to. And if we kept this white more as a reminder to us of that other company that failed, I, I don't I have no idea what they did. Some sort of computer thing. And then finally, after six months, after six months, we're like, okay, you know, we made it. Let's go erase that whiteboard and actually use it for ourselves. And come to find out it was like taped on. You know, you couldn't erase it. So we had to like take the whole thing off and throw it out. But it was a wonderful, wonderful way to start a business. We also, you guys may not know this, but we also invented the selfie. So every selfie that you take, we actually get a half cent. So you guys don't, don't are not aware of this, but a civil engineer invented the cell phone. We didn't patent it, so we don't get any money out of it. But that's that's my old firm, Gary and Henniker. We literally walked across the street and started a startup company. All right. So business planning, you hear a lot about business planning, right? You can take an entire course in business planning. Everybody's getting their sheets out, pencils out. You want to talk about business plans? It's kind of yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really think if there's one thing I want you to take away from this presentation, besides having fun, besides that civil engineers are way cooler than whatever you're studying, because we drink a lot of beer, is that there's one thing I want you to take away. At some point in your business, you need to make more money than you spend, right? Seems easy. Our government obviously hasn't figured it out, right? <laughs> but if you're starting a business, make more money than you spend, right? Step one. Yes, you can do a business plan, and you should. And I'm being facetious when I say that. You should have a plan. Let's just not call it a business plan, because that's such a business plan, right? We don't want to talk. All right. We're going to keep going. Uh, we're not going to talk a lot about the income side. We're going to talk a lot about the expense side. So I can give you some some information for what you can expect. And I'll leave the income side to you. Expense side, rent, insurance, salary, accounting, et cetera. We're going to talk about all that. So this is us and our business plan. My, my partner is obviously a little overwhelmed. This is March of 24, 2004. We started our business in April of 2004. We sat down, we got a computer out, we got Excel. We had Excel out. And we just put in our expenses. Right? And what, what, what could we expect our expenses to be? And then where the heck was the money going to come? 
right? And that's how we put the thing together. And we'll, I'll share that. Step one, and I'm going to go through these really, really fast because you're not going to remember this in 15 years when you start your business. But I want you to pull up the sheet and say, ah, there's step one. This is what I need to do. At some point, you're going to be working. And then when you work, you're going to sign stuff that says, I'm not going to compete with this company. So make sure whatever the hell you sign, you have a copy of it. Right? You keep a copy of it. And then take that copy and go see a lawyer. And they'll tell you what to do. My wife's a lawyer. So I can say that I'm not giving you legal advice. You need to go see a lawyer. So let's talk about that. The higher you go, you're president of a company, the more stuff you sign that says you're not going to compete. You're a junior engineer versus the, versus the president. Those things make a difference. Some of the no-brainer stuff, and I, and I help. I don't get any money for this. I don't get paid for this. And I help. A lot. So I get a lot of emails after these kind of presentations and they say, hey, I'm thinking about this. Can you help me out? And I'm more than willing to help. Right? I, this, that's what I'm here for. This is my passion, giving back. And I can't tell you how many times I get emails from somebody saying they're interested in starting their own company from their work account of the company they're going to leave and compete with. Right? Think ahead. Send it from your Gmail account. Don't spend time on company time, somebody that's paying you to start your own company that you're going to compete. Trust me when I say they have a lot more money than you do, and you'll get sued. You don't want to get sued. Right? That's not the point. So just pointers. Remember this later down the line, 10, 15 years down the road. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see, we talked about this stuff. Don't talk about it in the, in the world of social media, TikTok and Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm going to start my own company while you're still working at a company. They're not going to want to keep you employed there if you're going to compete with them in two months. Right? It's really hard in the world of social media. We didn't have social media in 2004. It was a little easier for us. Don't get so excited. Work, but don't share it. Right? All right, document your time. This is how we did it. So that way you're not doing it on company time. Just take vacation, <clears throat> take time off. And it's not on company time. All right, moving on. Very essential. Decide on your entity, find office, buy computer, buy software, open a bank account, brand, get insurance, business card, website. And you have to do all of this. And I'm not going to get into all of this. That's my other times with when you're further down in your careers, feel free to find me and I'll get into all this with you guys. But all I want you to take away from this slide is you have to do all of this before you start your day one, right? And the reason is you're going to have to, you have no idea where your, where your money's going to come from. You haven't talked with any clients. You haven't talked about how the revenue is going to come in because you're employed at another company, right? You're not going to go to someone that you're working with now and, and they're paying your old company and say, hey, uh, I know you're a client of the company I'm working for. By the way, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to start my own company. And you may want to think about switching to me while you're getting a paycheck from the company that got the client. That's a pretty good sign you're going to get. You're going to have to set all this up on your own time, at night, on weekends, whatever. And then day one, go hustle and go get some work. All right. So your entity, we're not going to talk about that. Office space, a lot, of, a lot of stuff there, a lot of information. We're not going to talk about that. Other than that's a, that's a landline. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> For those of you that are not aware, there were these telephones back in the day that plugged into the wall. And then that's the furniture that we bought. All right. Uh, some office equipment, essentials, branding. Who knows what branding is? What is branding? That's right, your logo. Your logo, your colors, your... Sorry, dude, you already got a gift for everybody. But I appreciate it. The rest of you feel free to All right, branding. Uh, so your generation is extremely handy uh, with... On the, on the digital side, right? And you, you've made your own videos, you upload them to TikTok, you 
uploaded stuff onto Instagram. And this is the part that I'm going to say, and I'll keep saying this, hire a professional. Go do it yourself. Right? You think, excuse me, you think you're going to be able to do it? You'll save time. I'm tech savvy. I know what I'm doing. No. Don't do it. Hire, hire a professional. And that's the same with insurance. That's the same with rent. Those slides that I skipped through say that. Right? You don't have time. All right, let's talk about, we had no idea how to do branding. We thought we'd do it ourselves. So I thought I'd show you what we came up with. So we went home one weekend and said, we're going to come up with our own logo. And so this is one of my partners, very, very civil engineering. You, you can almost see that that was going on all of that, right? Very blocky. This is one of my partners is from Hawaii. And you can see the waves, right? Like the, like the Maui gym kind of look. This is another one of us. And then we were so excited. We took these to our girlfriends and we took these to our parents and said, look at these logos we came up with. We're going to start our own company. They said, man, these suck. <laughs> like, what are you guys thinking? This is this is ridiculous. You guys can't go hire somebody. Right? And then we did. And the professional put this together. That was our first logo. And then and then recently we, we switched over, hired another even more professional. The point is, hire professional. I know you don't have money. I know you're going to be starting out your own company. Professionals know what they're doing and they're a lot more efficient. All right, moving on. You do need insurance. What kind of insurance do you need? Professional liability insurance. This is something that you may not have heard of. How many know what professional liability insurance is? You've heard of health insurance, dental insurance? Professional liability insurance covers you when that bridge that you design falls down, right? Or that road that you design falls apart or you leave a uh, scalpel in somebody's body if you're a doctor right or whatever a professional does a lawyer has professional liability a civil engineer has professional liability it covers you for malpractice right have you heard of that term, term, term malpractice that is the single biggest cost in insurance we're starting our own firm is professional liability insurance. It's based on how much money you make. And so the first year you have to estimate, you go to the insurance company and say, okay, how much money are you gonna make? And then they estimate it. It's kind of like uh, auto insurance, right? You all have auto insurance. And it's based on how many miles you drive, right? The first question that you ask is, you drive 10 miles and I drive a, a thousand miles, the chances of me hitting somebody are a lot more than if you drive 10 miles. Right, and so professional liability insurance works the same way. If if I bill a hundred thousand dollars and Bechtel bills two hundred million dollars, the chances of them getting sued for something is a lot more than me getting sued. That's how it works. It's also based on. Uh, there we go. It's also based on risk. -free. Right? If you're a teenager driving, your auto insurance is higher, right? Because they crash into things a lot more than if you're mature or older or whatever the PC term is. The same goes through with professional liability insurance. Engineers that work on condos pay a lot more for professional liability insurance than engineers that work with municipalities. Because historically, and these guys, insurance companies, have a lot of history. They can tell that people I work with sue me less than someone that works for a condo. Structural engineers have higher professional liability insurance. This is not about you as a structural engineer. For you, it's the profession of structural engineer, right? So it has nothing to do with the fact that you might be the best structural engineer there is. You might be the best teenager, teenage driver there is. But because you're in this pool with other teenagers, your insurance is higher. Same with this. So that all goes into play as you're putting your insurance together. All right, let's finish this up. So you add all this up, 7,500, uh, 7, 2,500, 2,000, let's bring it all together. Startup cost, computer, servers, water, branding, insurance, furniture, et cetera, et cetera, $45,000. That's a cost. It sounds like a lot of money right now sitting here, right? Average cost of starting a restaurant, 
almost a million dollars. The average cost of starting retail depends on what you're selling, but it's also in the millions of dollars. In the big scheme of things, starting a consulting firm does not cost that much. But the beginning, when I said go all in, save some money if you're going to do it, go all in. It doesn't cost that much money. I know, I know, I know 45,000 is a lot. You guys are students, you're sitting here like, I, I don't want to talk about that latte, except for that guy. He's got a nice prom day there. Um, but he hangs out with Warren Buffett. So. Um, it, it is, it's all relative, right? And later on in your careers, when you when you have the money and you're make, making income, that number is not going to tune up. But my point is that it's, it's accomplishable. Think about it. So that's your startup cost, monthly expenses. That's not, you know, that that's what you start with, right? But but you have monthly expenses. You have rent, medical insurance, equipment, software, phone calls, miscellaneous. What am I missing from this? What am I missing? Salary, 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 salary. So that is. I'm sorry. I, the, the last gift card is for John, but thank you for. I'll, I'll, uh, so you don't you don't know. How much money you're gonna need, or, or or how much income you're gonna have, but the salary is the biggest thing. You walk out of your job and you're gonna start your own business. You're not gonna have a salary. You're not gonna have health insurance. You're not gonna have dental insurance. You're not gonna have all these things that your job pays you right now. So take that into account. Add it up together. I'm giving you all this again down the road, 10, 15 years. Pull this up and just use it as far as you want. All right. On the income side, I, I, I know we didn't, I said I was going to talk about this. I have one slide. Where will your clients come from? Existing clients. And the biggest thing I want you to take away is you don't know where your income is coming from until you start on day one. Because you haven't talked to anybody, right? Because you don't want to get sued by anybody. So you walk out, you start a consulting firm. And then you start talking to all these clients that may end up coming to you. You have no idea if any of them are going to come or not. That is a really scary thought. We based our little spreadsheet on, on four out of our top 10 clients coming to us. Right? We said, okay, four of them come, three of them come with break even, four of them come, it's awesome. We're gonna we're gonna make it, we'll skiing. We had the opposite effect. We had seven of the 10 come. So then we're like, oh crap. We haven't done any of our branding. We haven't done it because we didn't know any of this. Right? No one told us you should do all this before you start. So we're scrambling, servicing our clients and, and servicing um, and setting our company. And we're very blessed. We're very blessed and lucky to have that situation. I can tell you that all of this is based on relationships. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. I have three more slides. And this is for the last. The very last gift card. The number one, we talked about the number two reason why businesses fail. We got to remember the number two reason? I said the very first slide. Partnership. Yeah, fast forward. What's the number one reason? Bankruptcy. Okay, why do people go bankrupt? Lack of planning. Lack of planning. Lack of planning. Okay, I like that. Lack of money. Cash flow. Cash flow. That's not the same as income expense, but no one else spoke up. You get it. Pretty close. So, what is cash flow? What is cash flow? Cash flow being money in the bank. All right. So, let me give you an example. You sign a contract with Intel to build them a brand new building. That's day zero. Right? You sign a contract. You're like, great. I have a million dollars in contracts. It takes a month to get the contract signed, right? They, they said, hey, we're going to sign a contract, but it still takes 30 days for you to sign that contract. It takes a month for you to do some work after the contract is signed. After 60 days, you send them an invoice. Say, hey, man, you did the work. Give us some money. Perfect. Average time to get a bill paid in the, in the A and E world, world, civil engineering, is 60 days. From the time you submit an invoice, from the time you get the money. 60 days, four months, four months from the time you sign the contract to the time you get cash in hand. That's cash flow. 
You have all these wonderful contracts that you've signed, but you don't have the money. The number one reason why businesses go bankrupt in the United States, go belly up, is not because they don't have contracts. It's not because they're not successful in landing jobs. Because they don't have money, cash, cash in hand, right? So what happens in those four months? You still have to pay rent. You still have to pay health insurance. You still have to pay professional liability insurance. You still have to pay your salary, your buddy's salary, your coworker's salary. All those expenses don't go away. You can't come to you and say, hey, man, sorry, you don't get health insurance until, uh, you know, we get the money from Intel. That's the number one reason. That's the number one reason why your business is going to go belly up. That's the number one reason why four out of five businesses go out of business. All right. What can you do to get ready? Last three slides here. Become a great engineer. No. Right? I have to be honest with you. I was not a very good engineer. I'm still not a very good engineer. I'm a pretty decent engineer. But I surround myself by really good engineers. Really great. Become a great presenter. Understand that our profession is based on relationships. That person sitting next to you can be your boss, can be your coworker, can be someone you get work from, a client. I can't tell you how many people we had alumni events here on Thursday. How many people I sat across that I went to school with that are now in different positions and, and, and those relationships are, are what keep us together. Everyone, and I hate to put this this way, but I'm going to be pretty blunt. For the most part, everybody coming out of school is going to be exactly You know what they call a doctor that just barely passed his medical board or a, or a civil engineer that just barely got his professional license? A doctor. What sets you apart? What sets you apart from all those other people sitting in this room? This is my very first job in 1996 that I applied for. It's a little small here. Did you guys see this number? 345 people applied for that job. 345 people applied for that job. They hired two when I was one of the two. So what set it apart? This guy right here, who's a really good friend of mine right now, was one of the people that was on the panel that interviewed me. The whole time we were talking about, he sat around and looked at my resume and said, man, you were president of the ski club at San Jose State? Where did you ski? I was ready to talk about all the classes I took and I was ready to talk about all the stuff that I did. It's the relationship that you built. And where is this guy now? He actually works for 30 years later. Don't burn any bridges. It's all about relationships. You never know who the person next to you and what they're going to be doing. More stuff, develop a network, build a client base, get involved. Get involved. Come to these things. This is the first step. Be a social butterfly in your own way. Engineers suck at being a social butterfly. So don't burn any bridges. Be well respected. Everyone's watching. I can't tell you how many times I go to these things and I, I have some people that sometimes I, I lecture actually at, at 160 at civil engineers. I'll be there in a week. Um, Dr. Lucas, people are like some people are dozing off. People are watching right? all the time. Right now, in the future. Someone came and wanted to work for us 15 years after we started the company. And the one thing I remember from that dude. Was that you would have little notes and you cheat during test from the time I went to school. That's what I remember about it. No matter where you are, everybody's watching. And in the world of social media, that's not going to go away. Okay? All right. More stuff in yourself in position to be lucky. That, that's kind of a vague term, but this is one of my last slides. And do, do things now. Build those relationships. So in 10, 15 years, we'll pay dividends. Don't be afraid to take chances. Outline your plan. Be prepared. Karma. I'm a firm believer in karma. Some people are. Some people are not. Lead with love. Be good to other people. There's a lot of bad people. There's a lot of people out there that have no problem saying, I lead and you follow. 
and you'll do exactly what I tell you. And we take it a different direction. We decided to be inclusive. We decided to lead the block. And we've got three people leave our company. And a lot of them are retired. Okay. Frequently asked question Why are you doing this? You're creating more competition, not really, because statistically speaking, four out of five of you will fail. Uh, when will I know I'm ready? I get this all the time. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, but when? When, when? when am I going to be ready? The day you know you're going to be ready is two months. Six months, two months, exactly. Where will my clients come from? I have no idea. That's up to you. So did, it, did we have an exit strategy? We, we talked about this goal. Your exit strategy is you're going to run out of money and you're going to go get a job for it. And you're out 50 grand. Right? And six months of life. But it's worth it. If it does, if it does work. What is the toughest challenge facing you right now? That's that's unimportant at this point. That's my contact info. But before we end, I have to say thank you to these two wonderful, wonderful human beings that brought me to this country. And I'm going to get on my soapbox and say that without them, I wouldn't be here. I literally would be dead. I came from a country in Iran that I was in the fourth grade. And in the fifth grade, they were sending kids to the front line. There was a war. Grab with grenades to go run underneath paint. True story. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. They gave up everything. My mother and father gave up everything to be here. And for as bad as we think this country is, as divisive as, 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 as it's portrayed to be, it's still one of the best countries in the world. Don't forget that as you go through life. Because there's nowhere else in the world that I could be coming, I could come to this country not speaking any English, not speaking a word, without a dime in my pocket, and be able to be here with you, parking in the dean's office at the parking spot. It's a wonderful country, and it's all because of these guys. They still ski almost as much as I do in their 70s. And we still have a lot of fun together, including my wife. And lastly, and I'll end with this. Go through life with a partner. My, I couldn't do any of this without my wife. She is my rock. She is my, she's my soul. She's my whatever you want to put exclamation there. But she's the reason I'm here. And I couldn't do it without her. And I couldn't do it without telling you. Cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> Which civil engineers help with? Yeah, my, my parents were big skiers. I, I just grew up with the sport. It's one of the, I'll tell you this, it's one of the few sports in life that you could do with your children, that you could do with your parents, right? Your kids start playing soccer, you're in the sideline watching them, playing basketball, you're watching them. One of the few things that you get to do outdoors with them. It's very expensive, and but it's because of my parents. Something that travel and you, you have that love. Appreciate the question. <laughs> very much, very much. <laughs> Great question. No one's going to give you credit because you're in your 20s and you're going in saying, Trust me, I have nothing but trust me. So, what we ended up doing is Gary, Gary and I. Um, he has saved up $25,000 and we put in a pool of $50,000 and we gave ourselves six months. He said, we're going to go all in for six months with that $50,000. But yeah, you do need that, you need the cash. But in our mind, that $25,000 was worth it, right? If, if, even if we put it through it and we failed, we can always say we tried. And, but you do need, you do need cash. And when I said, do you put yourself in a situation to be lucky? With one of the bullets, 
get buying frivolous stuff. If the opportunity arises that you want to start a company, it would suck to say, man, I'd love to do that, but I don't, I didn't save my inhabitants. I don't know what. Oh, okay, our clients. Man, I said I wouldn't know. <laughs> Essentially, during it's, it's relationship. So, so that is one of the. So, so, I didn't really focus on it a lot in this presentation, but in other presentations I give, I talk about relationship and, and really portraying yourself and putting yourself in, in the situation. Not portraying is not the right word. You want to be the best there is. So, when the client, when you do leave, to start your own company, the client wants to be with you. Consulting is not about a company, right? Procter & Gamble built is to sell shampoo, to buy their shampoo. A consulting firm, they hire you, they hire your brain. So it doesn't matter if that brain is here or there, right? And so put yourself in a situation, build those relationships with those clients. But when you do leave, they'll want to come They'll say, I want to work with, what's your name? Niharika. Niharika. I want to work with her. Yeah, I would imagine. If they give it to you, absolutely. <laughs> so, so I can tell you in consulting, you don't have any assets, right? So most of most of the time you get a loan, you get a loan on a car, or you get a loan on a house, or your loan goes against it. So if you screw up and stop paying, they'll say, I'll take your car. But uh, you, you, you don't have any assets that you're signing. So you're personally guaranteeing that loan. Right? And there's a term for it, and I'm, I'm spacing on it, but it's essentially it's that you don't have any assets to go against. And, and, and loans, and depending on how the market is, banks are extremely cautious. Then they base it on your history, right? They, they, the Elon Musk goes in and says, I want a loan, they'll hand them the bank. I go in and they're like, Who are you? Right? Like, what have you done? And so it's based on personal history at that time. And we have those. We're a bunch of 20 year olds going in and like wearing our first suit to go into the bank to get a loan. And they said, okay, we'll give you a checking account, but yeah, come back, you know, six months or a loan. So if you can get it, get it. And we have it. You know, we, we have our line of credit, you know, as most corporations do. But starting out, don't rely on it because you're not going to get it. Parents are a good one if you're going with a good business. I'm sorry, we have time. I'm sorry. When is the right time to do the uh, business? You retire. I love that. I love that question. I, I, I tell my wife, uh, I, I, we have that discussion all the time because I'm gonna, I keep telling her to work harder so I can retire. And luckily, because we, we are in the same boat, she tells me to work harder so she can retire. So again, making sure you're compatible. Um, you'll know. I mean, the best question, the best way I can tell you is that you'll know when it's time. And I know that's not the question, that's not the answer you want to hear, but you'll know when it's time. Obviously, there's a financial component to it. There's a love of what you do. I, I love what this young lady said at the very beginning, as far as the passion of, of what you like to do. And if you still have that and you have the drive, why not? So my plan is I'm probably seven, eight more years for me. And that's because financial makes sense. My kid will be in the right spot. I will still have physically be able to still travel and see you. Everybody's different. Um, so that means you have a false sense of security. Yeah. Yeah. 